as the last two videos have been a bit rambling and exploratory, I thought I'd just get back to making something. So I'm just going to create a cube, select the entire object, select all the edges, press C to connect those edges together, and C again to connect those edges together. Select the entire object, and then select vertices, right click and bevel that down. I'll hold the control key down. You can see that at some point they overlap one another. I don't want that overlapping to happen, so I'll just stop there. So you can see we've got all these different areas selected due to beveling those corners. And then right click and then intrude and just intrude it a bit. So that's what uh, 0.2 with the control key held down. And having done that, press space to deselect and get it so you're looking at one of these faces select the edge tool select this edge and that edge and that edge there so that's three edges to select each one's different press I for identical and then L for loop and L for loop again just in case right click and circularize and then holding the shift key down circularize it by a factor of 1.2 and hopefully there won't be too many collisions having done that then right click again and loop cut and at this point we now got lots of separate objects locate the one that's not selected hide it press space to deselect the rest and now we need to identify some of these faces that have been cut so look for the ones that are squares so that one and that one and bring back the hidden face and press I for identical now look down your geometry graph list find some others that are deselected hide one of those it's going to be one of these inner faces select a square in there bring it back press I for identical and then hopefully right click rotate normal you'll be able to rotate all of these faces 45 degrees hold the shift key down to make sure it sticks on 45 degrees left click select the entire object right click and weld then entire object right click and do Sabian subdivision Okay, right, press space to deselect all these and find one of these lines like there. A bit difficult to describe how that fits in, but it's going to allow it to flow across the entire shape. So we go uh, I for identical and then G, G again. Select the face tool, see if everything's filled in. If not, press Ctrl Z and go I again and G again a few more times and then see if it looks like it's running across the entire shape. Uh, at this point, a right click and intrude a bit alternatively right that's one way of doing it and select the entire shape and smooth it down and then you've got the shape which I'm going to export and then I'll just going to modify it in the way that Artway suggested in the last couple of videos if you've watched those so uh, export away from object and call this uh, cube uh, one object so it'll just take a little moment to export it is not comprised of any separate objects as far as I can tell, but I can do that test and then I'll use Ctrl Z to take me back, change the selection round by inverting it and then do it again and that'll we'll have the other they have the inverse of this, so we'll should have some separate loops. So that's exported that. I'll just go right click and separate. Note that it doesn't break down into any smaller objects. Now hold Ctrl and Alt and Z and Z and Z and Z and Z. And Z. Right, so with the control and Alt-Z it's possible to step back in stages and you can get quite a few stages backwards. And at this point when you've got these selected, go select and inverse. Right click and then we'll do the intrude again, just intrude it, I don't know, an arbitrary amount so it doesn't like it's getting too overlapped. Select the entire object and smooth and smooth. So now we've got lots and lots of separate loops. And at this point right click and separate. Let's see if it breaks down into separate loops. So we're one, two, three, four five, six, seven, eight separate components. So that's a bit unexpected, but there you go. It always seems to be the case in these things. And this one, get the entire thing, file, export, and uh, wavefront object again, and we'll call that two. So these two things, it might be possible to combine them, I don't know. We'll see at the beginning, I'll do a couple of renders, possibly three renders, one with one, one with the other, or all three in one render, I don't know, I've not decided yet, and that can be on the intro uh, frame of the video. So there you go, that's a way of making this thing that I've not yet come up with a name for, but it's fairly straightforward. So I hope you found that interesting and that you'll have a go at creating these shapes and using them in your own renders.